Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun, and I want to take a few minutes to talk with you guys about a very important project that I've been undertaking, and uh, I started this back, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, but I'm hoping to finish within the next couple of months or so, the book Moses, A Prophet Likened Unto Me, is the title of this book. Of course, I might change that, who knows, as, as time moves on here. This book, though, is a book that specifically is to reach the Jewish people that do not understand who Mashiach really is. And have we missed him? It's from a Jewish point of view where I can share with my uh, brothers and sisters around the world, my Jewish brothers and sisters, as well as the Christian Jewish brothers and sisters I have to give them a deeper insight on the Messiah himself, his identity, the overlooked scriptures, the unfulfilled prophecies throughout the Old Testament that a lot of people think have already been fulfilled, that have yet to be fulfilled or were fulfilled in the life of Yeshua. Prophecies that were completely overlooked, missed. Anyhow, we're getting to a place now to where I wanted to come and speak to you guys about this project because I want to make this project available to Jewish people, those that would like to get it free of charge all, all over the world and in various languages. So we're going to need your help, not only financially in being able to produce this, but especially I'm looking for those that have talents in other languages people that are native speakers in their own language, perhaps Spanish, French, Danish, uh, whatever the language may be, Norwegian, Swedish, Russian, etc. And especially I'm looking for someone that speaks Hebrew fluently and that has the ability to translate in a very, well, actually it'd be better if the person was a native Israeli that can translate this message into Hebrew. My Hebrew is nowhere near adequate. I can edit Hebrew, but I cannot translate into Hebrew and make it the right way. So I'm looking for people that have these talents here so that we can share this book, these insights, with Jewish people all over the world. And as well as making it available for the Christian people at as the bottom price we possibly can. And of course, as always, if with any book that I've ever written, if, we can, if you don't have the funds to pay for it, we give it to you with no problem whatsoever. Because the whole thing is with the books, they've never been a profit endeavor. It has always been for the purpose of reaching souls, lost souls, to get them to recognize that Yeshua indeed is the Messiah. And He is the only way. He is the only salvation that we have in the days that we are living in. Another thing that we are facing as well as we do Israeli News Live is that when I'm working on study projects, trying to leave, release messages to you guys, then I end up getting bogged down because as we came overseas, the only thing we brought were laptops, my wife's laptop and mine. And unfortunately, to produce film, you can only, it has to be a certain type of machine to do it. Now, I do have the one laptop that can do it, but it's very slow, even though it's super fast for the type of laptop it is. So we're at the need now that we need to get a tower computer, a, a regular power, uh, computer that has the ability to process video images, well, kind of like what I guess young people would call a gamer's computer. I don't like gamers, but I hear that that's similar to what we're needing in that area. And so we have several needs here. And of course, as the Bible says, if you, if you, if you ask, you shall receive. So we know if we put this before you guys, and even if you don't have the means, uh, if you could be praying for us about these things that God will provide, the needs that we have here, especially in translators, that's so important. And we can't wait for you guys to be able to see this book as well. So many of the teachings that you have heard over the years where God has revealed to me, because many of you guys that have been here for the last four, four years or so, that have seen the things as God has unraveled these mysteries that even for myself, has blown my own mind. How can God reveal so many things that for one little guy like myself to know these things, and it's obvious, is to help the Jewish people to recognize who their Messiah is. That his name was indeed Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, as we often hear his name called in the English language. And so my desire is that the Jewish people will see and hear and believe that He indeed is the Messiah, bringing out to them those points 
that they often have overlooked, points that Jewish people typically should have recognized, things that Yeshua said that should have made them know who he was. So anyway, if you know of anyone like this, please email us. You can go to our website, israelreturns.com or israelinewslive.org. Either place, there's a contact section there where you can email us that way in case you forget. But also my personal email, I'm going to share that with you. Not many people get this email, but I'm sharing it with you, especially in a situation like this. If you have that talent, email me. I get a lot of correspondence as it is, hundreds of correspondences through different types of uh, uh, areas like Facebook, etc. So it's hard for me to see all the emails. So I ask, so, though I put this private email out there, that if you would um, make it for this purpose here. Of course, if it's a serious issue like a, an emergency prayer request, I don't care how you contact me. I'm there for you to pray with you and anything I can do to help you there. You can always use any email, any access you can get a hold of me with. For that a telephone call wouldn't matter which way it is in a case of prayer that is the most important thing is when someone is sick or salvation in fact to recognize that Yeshua is Messiah and to receive him as your own personal Savior that is what that's what the whole body of Christ is for is to win souls to Christ and you know from time to time I know people think well you know Steve puts all these emphasis on the Jewish people and forget about the Gentiles that's not the case. Remember, though, I'm your brother, but I'm just part of the body, just as you're part of the body. And my passion is for my own people to recognize that he is the Messiah. Uh, I remember one time meeting a, a dear sweet sister that went on to be with the Lord, and she was from uh, Europe. Uh, I forget exactly which country it was from. I think she was from Holland. And when I met her, she was so in love with the Lord Jesus. And the first day I saw her, she's an elderly lady. She opened the door and she just began to pet me on the face. And she was just stroking my beard and she said, you're so beautiful and I've waited so long to meet you. And I'm thinking to myself, is this lady okay? You know, I really, I didn't know, you know, and I'm like, I'm wondering what's, what's going on with her. And then she tells me, she says, you know, I had to come to America to find and meet Jesus. She said, I never heard about him in my own country. I came here to hear about him. And she had a beautiful testimony, absolutely beautiful testimony. She went on to be with the Lord. But so many people that I've met, like her, always wanted to take the Lord Jesus back to their own people because they would think their people don't know him. Much like my wife, she so much wanted her own people in her home country, Slovakia, to know about Yeshua, to know that Jesus truly was the true salvation because she said to me, in her home country, they're all Catholics, either Catholics or Jehovah's Witnesses, which I even hate that. I think the J-Witnesses J is better, kind of like the way uh, Tobia Singer calls them, J-Witnesses. Um, but that's about all they have in that country. And no doubt God judges from the heart. I believe that. But could you imagine living in a country like that and never truly having a genuine relationship with the Lord? It's very tough. But she had such a desire when she came to know Yeshua as her own Savior to take the gospel back to her people. And it's the same for me. And that's what it is. That's what you see. When you see me talking about the Jewish people a lot, it's because there's a passion in my heart for my own kindred, the people that I am born of, to know that Yeshua indeed is the Messiah. I want them to know what God has been so kind to reveal to you as a Gentile people. And often when you hear me say things like the Christian Bible or the Jewish Bible, it's not to separate, but the thing is, is I always try to keep in mind, like Paul said, he became all things saving that he might win some. And so I do the same for them. If I were to say the New Testament, even though I call the Jewish Bible the Jewish Bible or the Tanakh, then they would automatically think that I'm putting them down. If I say that the New Testament is the New Testament, which I do believe it is, no doubt about it, it's the New Covenant. Uh, for them, though, they might not listen. And I really want to gain their heart. I want them to recognize that Yeshua indeed was the Messiah. And so my heart is passionate for my people. And I am surrounded 
by the most amazing Christian friends that a person could ever have. Literally thousands of you guys are right there with me. And you've been a part of this ministry. And it's your love and your kindness that is making these things possible for us to take the gospel, not only to my own people, but even to share it with my wife's people. And even there's other places we haven't told you much about yet because we're kind of in the middle of a pa uh, our passport uh, documentation, some verification things that we're doing now. But we're planning on traveling quite extensively, including into Russia, to Moscow, and other places to try to share the gospel everywhere we can. It's one of the reasons why this book is very important to me, Moses, a prophet likened unto me. Because there's Jewish people everywhere, not to mention, what about those, the Gentile people that don't know Yeshua either? For me, anywhere I'm at, every soul matters, especially in the hour we're in. This is why you don't want to ever pass up the slightest person, whether it be someone at the cash register in the grocery store, or, or, or if it's someone, um, you go to dinner or something, and you have a waiter or waitress there, share with them the love of Yeshua. Let them know that Jesus Christ still lives and He longs for that relationship with them. That's the most important thing you can do, especially in the hour you're living in. I don't believe in pushing myself on people, but I do look to see if a door will open. Sometimes you can just bring up an odd subject with them. You don't have to necessarily just up, you know, up and say, oh, by the way, do you know that Jesus is the Lord? <laughs> you know, you can do it very subtly, especially, you know, when you're out somewhere publicly and it's a stranger, you know, say, gosh, you know, isn't it crazy the way things are going on? You know, I mean, the earthquakes everywhere. I mean, it's like you think we're in an apocalypse. There it goes again. I think that I have to thank that brother that sent me the, how to say the word apocalyptic. <laughs> so I'm still practicing that. But anyway, you know, you can tell them, look at the, it's just strange the way it is. And normally they'll respond back, especially if they're not expecting you to talk about the Lord. But it's the time to talk to the people about the Lord. You know, it's really sad. Most countries in the European area here, over, over in Europe, it's amazing. They hardly know who the Lord is. It is really a Roman Empire revived. And I know that we may have differences, some of us that, that, that are even faithful listeners here that might disagree with me on the Antichrist. Or, you know, they'd say, well, the Pope is a false prophet, but not the Antichrist, things of that nature there. I actually haven't answered that one for you yet, but I'll get into that one there as well. But, you know, it doesn't, things like that are so minor in the gospel, in the scheme of things, it doesn't really matter which one he is or he isn't. None of that really matters. What matters is if you really know that Yeshua is your Savior. That's what matters. All these other things here, well, we're just kind of injecting our thoughts, what we think is right, trying to help people along the way, especially if it's a matter of their soul in the case of people being trapped in the Catholic Church. and, and I'm sure that well, we know that there's good people in the Catholic Church. If God said, to, to, said in His Word, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her, of her sins and her plagues, then surely His people are there. And it's worth warning them. I know myself, I have family that are actually Catholics, extended through my stepdad's family, precious people that I love dearly, that I'd like to see come out. No, no doubt you do as well. Maybe a neighbor, maybe your friends or whatever. Or maybe they're in a church and it's just lukewarm. Maybe they don't even know Christ. Maybe it's uh, uh, some friend of yours that's a gamer or something. You know something, let me share something with you real quick. And I know it's kind of off subject. I, I just kind of did this haphazardly, this video here, but I think it's for a good purpose. Gamers has become a big issue today. People playing video games all the time. And I had a conversation recently with a young man about video games. And I shared with him something that I thought might would help him. It might be something you could share with people that do games as well. And I said, you know, what happens is Satan is a thief. I said, what he wants to do is rob you of your time. That's what Satan likes to do. He's a thief and a robber. It doesn't have to be video games either. It could be anything. It could be... It could be men playing golf or, 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 or magazines or movies or, or television or whatever the case may be. Satan is a thief. And what he does, 
I see it mostly though, people that are into video games though, because they will spend hours, un, um, amazing hours in doing video games. And they, real, they don't realize, even though, let's say the video game's not that bad. I mean, there's some that probably are not that bad. They don't, they're not violent. They're not this or that, you know, they just seem to be, ah, okay. You know, maybe it's a simulator game or something. Someone likes to do flight simulators or something like that. Well, when you see that it's robbing you of your time, then you know it's not of God. Because see, Satan doesn't, he, what he wants to do is rob you of your time. Your time that you would spend in prayer, the time you would spend with the Lord, time that you would spend reading your Bible. And I know a lot of times the people, if you were to ask them, I've asked before, you know, people that actually do the video games 12, 13 hours in a day, and I've actually asked the question, do you love the Lord? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I love the Lord. And so I took this one young man, and I asked him that question, and I, I shared with him. I said, don't let Satan, I said, because I, I knew the young man personally anyway, and I told him, I said, I know that you love the Lord. I said, but Satan is robbing you. Because what happens is what people don't realize in another dimension from what we're in now, you have the Holy Spirit and you have the evil spirits. And the Lord deals with you. I said, notice, have you ever, I said, do you notice how that, you know, I said, do you get think, thoughts on your mind about the Lord? He says, yeah, yeah, occasionally I do. I said, that's the Holy Spirit trying to draw you to him. I said, but then you have that other side that draws you to the game. I said, what makes you want to play the game? They said, well, you know, you just, it's just cool, man. You just, I said, exactly. Satan pulls you in. And what's he doing? He's robbing you of your relationship with God. That's what Satan does. He's a thief and a robber. You know, my wife makes, made a comment not long ago when we were doing the Star of David. She said, I'm taking back what belongs to me. And that's what you have to do even with the gospel. It's what you have to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ. Take back what belongs to you. The relationship between you and Him, it belongs to you. And don't let Satan rob you of that blessing. We love you. God bless you so much. Thank you for taking a few minutes of your time to listen to this. Again, don't forget, we're looking for translators. You can email me. My name is Stephen Ben-Noon, and I know that maybe sounds confusing. You'll, you'll see Stephen Ben-Noon on the YouTube channel. Then you see Stephen Ben-Noon, or I say Stephen Ben-Noon, and it's like, wait a minute, what is this? Well, legally, my name is Stephen Ben-Noon, B-E-N hyphen N-U-N. My father, though, does go by Den-Noon, D-E-N-O-O-N. And so I named my channel after my father's name. That's my biological father, Ronald Denoon. So it's, it's named after him. It's who my channel is named after using his name there. But my name is actually Ben Noon, which literally does mean the same as his name. His is the French version. Mine is the Hebraic version of our names. So anyhow, so it makes it a little bit simpler for you to know that. Uh, so yeah, take, like I said, email us. Uh, contacts either at Israel, israelinewslive.org or israelreturns.com or email me, Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, Ben Noon, B E N N U N, at AOL.com. There's no hyphen in there when you do the email, all lower caps, nothing special about it. Anyway, God bless you. We love you. Show.